Welcome to another video everyone. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. Today we're going to talk about the best gaming chains in Web3. Now, this is in no particular order, and I'm going to put these into two categories. We're going to look at dedicated gaming chains, and then we're going to look at the general chains that have been quite tailored for games or that are very popular for games. Keep in mind, this is up to interpretation, so not everyone will agree with me, but these are some of the chains I think you need to look out for. If any gaming studios are watching this and evaluating which chain is best for your specific needs, feel free to hit me up via LinkedIn or email and I can help you out with that as well. Now first off is Immutable X. Well, Immutable. This is probably one of the better known gaming chains out there for a few reasons. And now they actually have two chains. They have the original Immutable X, which is a ZK rollup powered by Starkware, and then they have the newer Immutable ZK EVM powered by Polygon. One of the biggest differences is that the ZK EVM chain supports custom smart contracts, but does have a small gas fee instead of being free. In terms of number of games, IMX is probably number one from all the dedicated gaming chains, and it's not a coincidence that their BD team is definitely one of the strongest out there that I've seen. There are a handful of very notable games, probably Illuvium is one of the ones that you will all know. They also have Gods Unchained, Undead Blocks, Kiraverse, Guilds of Guardians, just to name a few of them. Of course, there is some junk in the mix too, but overall I would say the quality of game on IMX is decent compared to some of the other chains that we see. From the user standpoint, the biggest argument I see against IMX is that it's kind of a pain to use. Honestly, the wallet system is confusing and it's not very user friendly. Now, they have a new passport system that I haven't tried and this looks a lot more promising to me and I think they are trying to address some of the issues users have had using IMX, the first chain in the past. Next up is the Ronin Network. Ronin is an EVM layer 2 chain designed by Sky Mavis, obviously most known for Axie Infinity. Love it or hate it, it is still one of the best known Web3 games out there and it still has some of the most players in Web3 at the moment. Their total NFT volume is over $4 billion, which blur right now is $6.2 billion in total as a comparison. The highest volume marketplace of any dedicated gaming chain, Ronin Network. Unfortunately, at one point they did suffer a bridge hack and they lost $600 million, which set them back a ways. They have onboarded over 11.4 million wallets, which is a pretty big deal, especially when you think that many of these are new crypto users and are new into the blockchain scene. One of the biggest reasons to deploy on Ronin is that they have an active community. You can see this on Twitter, on their socials, it's very obvious. Even when we had a steep downturn in the daily active users on Axie, the community is much more active than the general NFT or the general crypto space, or even many of the other gaming communities out there. Their recent mint with Kongs is a great example and it did very well considering the price in my opinion was extremely high. The other one I want to mention is Oasis blockchain. Oasis is the biggest gaming chain out of Japan and Japan is being focused on a lot more lately with the huge number of gamers here and becoming slowly more friendly to Web3. Oasis itself is an EVM hub layer, they call it the layer 1 consensus layer and then they have third parties building verse layers underneath which is their level 2 scaling solution. It sounds odd to mention geography when I talk about Japan, but Japan is really important at the moment. With three of the world's 10 biggest gaming studios in Sony, Nintendo, and Bandai Namco being based in Japan, Oasis has a huge advantage when it comes to these Web2 studios because of how business is done in Japan. If you've ever done business with a Japanese company or here, you'll kind of realize it's very face-to-face, -face, very in-person, and very hands on the ground. And so that's why mentioning the geography of Oasis is important, even though technically basically every Web3 company in Japan has an office in Singapore, and then they have a sister company in Japan just to hire a few people to be on the ground to do business face to face. I could rant on and on because I live in Japan, but the point being they have an advantage here when it comes to these major Web2 studios. Funny enough, Ubisoft's first Web3 game, Champion Tactics, is also going to be launching on Oasis, even though Ubisoft, if you know, is based out of Europe. Now, they already have some projects in the works with the likes of Square Enix and Sega, and we'll have to wait to see if they can continue making these inroads with the major Japanese Web2 gaming studios, 
or if the other companies moving into Japan, like IMX just hired four people here, Arbitrum just launched a Japanese branch as well. So there are other gaming studios making inroads into Japan as well, and we'll have to see if Oasis can continue to capture the giants first. In terms of other dedicated gaming chains, there are a few others I want to mention quickly. One of them is Engine. Engine has lost favor a little bit, but it finally launched its blockchain on September the 13th, and it's a custom layer one with NFT functionality built in. Engine Engine has been around for a very long time, um, since like 2018 with the likes of Axie Infinity, with the likes of IMX, and so I think it's always been kind of top of mind, but it took them a very long time to actually launch the blockchain. And then we have Wax and we have Hive. Both have fallen off the radar a lot as well. They're mostly worth mentioning because of Splinterlands, which has consistently been one of the top three web games in terms of number of players. Wax also has more than 10 million wallets, which is quite a big deal. And then we have chains like Wemix. Wemix is worth a quick mention as well because of how successful Mir 4 was a little while ago, especially here in Asia. And I've seen them at a lot of events. They are onboarding a lot of games to their Wemix ecosystem and their chain. But honestly, in general, I find them to be a bit lower quality and a bit more junky. In general, there are some good ones there compared to some of the other chains. Moving on, now we have the general chains, the general blockchains that have a big focus on gaming or have onboarded a lot of games. And the first one we have to mention is Arbitrum. Now, when you say Arbitrum, you might think DeFi, but you have to look at the Treasure ecosystem because Treasure is built on Arbitrum and Treasure has become a major player in the gaming space. Although Arbitrum is not Treasure's end goal, they've talked about this before, that's where they currently are. Arbitrum itself is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. And Treasure is a gaming platform offering publishing capabilities, infrastructure, and tooling to accelerate game devs. As far as integrated games go, they're using their token magic. There are 12, last I checked, with a dozen more integrated games into their marketplace and infrastructure that aren't using the magic token. We have seen a lot of games actually switching over from other chains to Arbitrum in order to be involved with the Treasure ecosystem, which is probably a sign that they're doing something right. Treasure really is GameFi at its core. It started with a lot more of the DeFi elements than traditional games, and more traditional games have slowly been added on and have built around that foundation, which is quite an interesting system to me as well, and I've always kind of kept an eye on them for that exact reason. Next up, we have Polygon. Polygon is one of the better layer two solutions for Ethereum, arguably, which means that it has a good solution for lower gas fees for any game that doesn't want to be on Ethereum specifically. And being one of the more developed ecosystems, the more developed blockchain, there's a lot of infrastructure already set up, already being built that devs have access to. There's also a lot more liquidity when it comes to NFTs and mints, which is why we see a lot of the free mints, especially done on Polygon when they don't want to pay ETH gas fees because the mint is free. Polygon is really the best option for liquidity. However, it is not optimized for games, and because the chain is huge, you don't really get that same white glove approach or support that you would get on a chain like Ronin or IMX, but Polygon has a huge number of games that have started building on it already and have done mints on it already, so it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. The other chain I want to mention is AVAX. AVAX is an interesting one because it allows you to create AVAX subnets. They are basically a composed of dynamic subsets of the Avalanche validators. Essentially, it's like having your own unique gaming chain or your own unique chain because it is highly customizable. And we see games choosing this when they want to do something very specific that they can't do on one of the other chains. The main issue I see is that it's expensive and time consuming to set up, but it offers a very custom solution. And we're seeing a few different projects abandon this already because of the cost. I've already seen a few games that said they're going to make subnets give up and be like, you know what? We don't actually need the headache. We're going to go somewhere else. But there are games that are specifically choosing to stick with it because they want to do some really cool implementations. I think the best example is Shrapnel. Shrapnel is building its own subnet. Another one that I've been keeping an eye on lately is Beam, the subnet that is being made by the Merit Circle team because I've talked to them and they've onboarded a handful of games already and they're also doing something that's rather unique. And then a few more quick mentions. Of course, you have BSC, Binance Smart Chain. This is very similar to Polygon in a lot of ways. They have a lot of liquidity, infrastructure, and there's already a bunch of games deployed there. Then we have chains that are a bit newer like Sui, 
Aptos as well to a lesser degree, but they are a lot less developed than BSC or Polygon are, but they're up and coming and they are aggressively targeting some games. At all these SUI events I go to, there's always a couple games that have been onboarded there. And I know that they're also investing in some of these games as well. So another player to look out for down the road, but not nearly as many games on there as some of the other scaling solutions at the moment. Of course, this is not every gaming chain or not every chain focused on gaming, but I think these are the top ones you need to watch, whether you're a developer or whether you're just a retail investor. Let me know down in the comments if there's something I missed or if there's a point you wanted me to elaborate on. Happy to dive in deeper to some of these ecosystems in other videos. Either way, thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll see you again soon.